All right, guys. Today I am here with Katie. Um, Katie is a fitness instructor. She works for uh, and has worked for some different companies over the years. And then she also has a company called Dough Street Cookie Dough. And so we connected on Instagram and I just had to know how this group fitness mindset interacts with cookie dough. So should be a fun one as we talk about a little bit of food, nutrition, and, and those kinds of things. So Katie, thanks for joining us. And, and can you introduce yourself for, for the listeners? Sure. Thanks. Thank you for having me, Nick. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I started and we can talk more about it as we go, but I started in fitness because I rode in a bike race in college. And that's kind of what got me started in fitness and started me like teaching spinning. And then over the years, I got more certifications and have you know, taught more formats and gotten more like certifications as far as even recovery things like myofascial release, which I got a certification in more recently. I'm um, studying to get a nutrition certification. And then uh, in conjunction with my healthy eating, I also love dessert. <laughs> and that's how I started a dessert company called Dough Street Cookie Dough about three and a half years ago. Pretty interesting. So let's, yeah. let's start at the beginning. You said you, yeah. you got started into fitness after doing a bike race. Is this something you just like up and decided to do, or did you train for it? Well, okay. So in college, I went to Indiana university and there's a bike race called little 500. It's a take on the Indy 500. It's not 500 miles and it's not 500 laps. It's the women's race. When I rode in, it was 100 laps around a standard. It was a cinder track. So I started my sorority, um, hadn't had a team for years and I was into fitness and I like to work out. Um, and it was really fun, also kind of social thing in Indiana. And some of the teams were super, super serious. Like they trained year round for it. They had like those, you know, uh, rollers like in their dorms or like in the fraternity houses or sorority houses. We were not so serious because we hadn't had a team in my sorority for many, many years. But so I started a team after seeing it run uh, the race on or the bike race go on my freshman and sophomore year. I decided to start a team for my sorority my junior year. So I rode junior and senior year and we did start training. The race is in April every year. We started training like January, which was not a lot of time compared to some of the teams. But we did, and that's how I got into spinning because spinning, indoor cycling classes, had um, kind of gotten popular in LA and in New York. And there was somebody who owned a small gym in Bloomington, Indiana, and they went out to the West Coast and they ended up bringing spinning back. So little five riders could use it as indoor training in the winter for, for little five. So that's how I got into spinning. I will never forget my first class. It was like, the place was called Wrapped in Action. It was like a downstairs gym with an upstairs. And it was like a little tiny hallway where there's like 10 bikes, like, like this, like do, 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 in Just like a little, little circle. Other. Oh, on top of each other. And the four of us on our team went and took a class. One of the girls got off the bike halfway and went and threw up. And I was like, <laughs> this is amazing. So that's how it all started. <laughs> so is this, this race, is this on like a 400 meter, like, track like yeah. running track uh -huh. how many yeah. people yeah, wipe but it's out? cinder it, it's like cinders yeah. so like and you are people like just crashing left and right what are people just wrecking left and right on these oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. my junior year i started the race for our team so it's a team of four and you have to like transition like if you come in for a pit stop like the other person starts running with the other bike and to jump on um it, usually I had my own bike because I was the shortest one. So the tall people all shared a bike. So they would actually jump off and jump on the same bike. I, they would ru start running next to me as I came in the pit stop. My, my junior year, my first year riding the race, I crashed on like the opening, like it's a sprint right out of the gate with like 30 teams. And we qualified towards the back of the pack, which you may imagine because we had not, you know, this is a new upstart for us. <laughs> So we were towards the back and I couldn't see because there's like tents and stuff on the infield and I couldn't see the one curve. And so I came around the curve and everyone was already like on top of each other. So I just like piled right my bike right up on top of them, <laughs> flipped over onto the infield. Then I was like, you know, they brought a replacement and in like 15 minutes I went back out there. Yeah. So people crash, you know, they're, I, oh yeah, it, it's a great fun, hot mess. 
uh, yeah, I'm assuming there's at least a little bit of alcohol involved in this whole nonsense too. Yes, after the race. Oh, so, okay, like, okay. Yeah, the super serious teams that train hard, they like go dry. Can you imagine that in college? <laughs> they don't drink any alcohol like while they're training. And then the weekend when it's the race is over, like all, you know, bets are off. But we weren't totally dry either. No, yeah. but there was a lot. Yeah, there was a lot. And um, you do, I don't know if you know the movie. It was like a 1970s movie called Breaking Away. Mm-mm. So look it up. Night in it, that movie is based on Little Five Hundred. Is this, so, so this is like a thing. Like this is a national thing. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does it still exist? Yeah. Are people still uh-huh. doing this? Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. Tra- training every year in spinning studios. So, yep. so <laughs> I'll have to check right. this out. I had not heard about this. We, uh, Kara, our uh, therapist in the Cleveland location, she is big into the cycling world. So I, I have to ask her if she's done this. Yeah, ask her if she's ever heard of Little 500. Little 500, it, yeah. Little 500 in Indiana University, yep. Yeah, bring, so that's bring. how it all started. That's how my fitness started. And I, you know, I loved spinning. I loved indoor cycling. I kept doing it all the way through college. And then when I... Got out of college, I actually majored in broadcast journalism and worked in sports broadcasting for a while. And then um, when I was working in that, I still like on the side once or twice a week would teach a spinning class, like whatever city I was living in. So that's pretty awesome. So where do you teach now? What what uh, what locations? So I teach at Groove Ride in uh, Woodmere and also Van Aken. Um, I teach at the Mandel JCC, the JCC in Beechwood. Mm -hmm. And I teach at Solon Community Center, which I've been at for a very long time, um, which is like right around the corner from my house. I've taught over the years, I mean, almost everywhere, like around here in the city. And I truly loved every place like uh, Severs Athletic Club, which I used to live down by, you know, the Heights and that's out of business now. Um, so I've taught a lot of different, a lot of different places. Um, and along the way, like everyone I've met, like has been so great. It's been, it's been fun. Yeah. I'm sure it's a pretty tight knit community there. What is it about yeah. spinning? Like why, why do you, what attracts you to spinning and, and why do you think people should do it? Well, for spinning, it was the first thing I did in like group fitness and, Mm -hmm. um, and it got certified to teach. So I, I don't, I think it's, I think it's such a great workout for everybody. I think anybody could do it, you know, young and old. I have people in my classes. I teach at Solon Community Center. Um, I think the oldest person in my class on Sundays now is maybe 77 or 78, I mean, and then there's people who are 25. Mm -hmm. It is a workout for everybody. It's a low impact. It's very um, safe for people with any like knee problems. There's no jumping. Uh, You control the resistance on your bike. So you're making it harder or lighter. And I always tell everybody and any good instructor um, should always say like, you know, do what you're comfortable with. Like, listen, if there's a 78 year old in my class and they're not comfortable doing what we call jumps, it's just like up and down out of the saddle on the bike. Don't do them. You are here, you're working out. And that is a wonderful thing. You're taking this class, like stay flat, stay in your saddle and ride it out. You know, if you want to like come up a little bit, do that. And so it really is something that's attainable for everybody. And that's one thing I've always loved about indoor cycling um, you know, over the years I've gotten certified in, in other things too, which we can touch on, but, um, you know, certain workouts definitely are for, you know, different, different people, but I think spinning is really an indoor cycling is really all encompassing. So, yeah, I, sometimes I, people say they're afraid to try it. Um, which I would always say, don't be afraid. Like it is a very, non-intimidating workout once you're think, in the room and you get set up why do you think people are afraid to try it i think people think it's going to be so intense that they can't maintain um but they don't realize that they're controlling the resistance and they can take it at their own pace yeah 
Yeah, you can fake spin the dial, right? Like you can pretend you're turning it, but not actually turn it. Yeah, yeah, you can, <laughs> but I always know. I always know. I tell them, I'm like, I know if you're not really turning it. Or it's like you say it's full turn, you know, and they go, I'm like, yeah, yeah, tiny little like, turn. Yeah. Well, that's a little quarter turn, but okay. <laughs> there's like this mental like satisfaction of cheating by like a quarter of a turn, right? Like, oh, I went three oh. quarters of the way. Like, oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, right. Or, exactly. Yeah. Um, I love the people that like the resistance is supposed to be cranking and you look over and they're like the revolutions of minute, they're still flying. And you're like, there is no way. <laughs> yeah. And that's not safe. Are you, are you, do you like spinning? Or I've done, I've done a fair share of it. Um, yeah. Okay yeah um I, yeah those, it, it's so unsafe to you when you're like you i always say you should never have the bike pedaling you like if your revolutions mm, per minute are that yeah. fast then you're not doing anything you know yeah. the bike's in control yeah i went to school at youngstown state university and um oh, yeah. we we used to do it there quite a bit and then my dad actually loved like he just got certified to be a spinning instructor so he is all into it <laughs> Um, that is so, so cool where yeah. does he teach around here he's in the youngstown area there's a place out there called okay. pure pure cycle um okay and i don't know i don't know what they're doing now currently but historically they were more into like it's it uh spin bike style but it was more geared towards like training for an event so there okay. was like it was less of the like high intensity spinning style class and more like geared towards a uh, training for a ride so yeah longer durations at a certain cadence and you know different power stuff and and whatever so it was a little different style um i think they it sounds like they do a mixture of both now um and it's so interesting to see too like in all these years like how the styles have evolved and you know there's there are different styles of spinning and indoor cycling now like it used to always be called spinning and now it's like indoor cycling because it's like it depends on what brand bike you know the gym has that you know the manufacturers work with but um yeah it's it is it is it's become you know there's the you know groove ride teaches more like the to the beat of the music mm-hmm. more like a soul cycle um beat driven dance kind of style so really it's broadened a little bit so really there's even something for every, to every everyone with it Right. And at the end of the day, right, we're looking to elevate heart rate and get yourself moving. And, and I don't think it matters. But yeah. if it adds that like excitement, that fun factor to it, uh, I yeah. think that's so important. And then the other thing we're seeing, you know, the more more of these podcasts that I do with the community, pick your fitness, it's about the culture and the community that you get brought into, right? That's what's most important. And I think you just got to find your your click, your people. Absolutely. It's so true. Like, what are you looking for? Like in a class, what are you looking for in an instructor? What are you looking for in a gym or fitness studio? Like, you know, find a place. I would always tell people like, first of all, find something that's convenient. Cause if it's not convenient, you're probably not going to go right. So make sure it's convenient and then find some place that you feel comfortable. Like you want to go that you get excited about that like you feel like it's a second home that's so important yeah and i think you know COVID obviously brought about this whole online online version of these classes and i think you're seeing people quickly go back to in person as quick as they feel comfortable with it because you don't get that community right you don't get that that aspect of when you're when you're online only no you don't i mean it's 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 a double-edged sword because it's so great that what COVID brought was a chance for us to be able to teach and other instructors and in, in studios to be able to provide a live stream or online service to like broaden that into like what did they do and for mm-hmm. people who aren't maybe comfortable coming back to the studio or a facility yet but you don't get that same feeling like listen i loved it was super fun teaching from my basement for a few couple months <laughs> like <laughs> but you know it it's a different feel like it is a different feel when you guys talk to everybody before class for a few minutes or answer questions after a class or you know you know just you know just see people in person and having that you know kind of connection yeah is i just very special And I would tell people like when you're ready, if they're not ready yet and people are listening to this or watching this and they haven't come back to the studio, when you're ready, come back because 
you may get comfortable doing it at home. Listen, I work out at home. Like I have everything I need here and I work out at home sometimes. And, you know, it's, in some days it's great. It's convenient. You have a lot to do. You're on a podcast. So I don't go to the gym. I worked out in my basement, you know, but, Mm -hmm. um, some days it's just nice to know that you have somewhere to go and people are going to see and somebody to push you and tell you what to do. And you don't have to, you know, make any decisions about what you're doing for your workout today. You're just, you have to go in and have that time to like clear your head and have a hundred percent you time. Yeah. I just finished a podcast with a friend of mine, Emily Kloss, and she's building like an online yoga uh, practice. And she's emphasizing that she wants it to be hybrid, right? Like do both. Yeah. And I think, yes, you yes. know, the conversation has been either or, but now I think exactly what you just said, we're going to have the option to do both and yes. just whatever fits for that day. Right. As long as you get, get something in, that makes a, makes a ton of sense. I yeah, gonna, absolutely. Like hundred percent is groove yeah. still doing, are they still doing online? Like, are they still filming online classes as well? Yeah, as so we have for groove ride, we have um, live in studio we have live stream option for some of them. So most of those are all at uh, the Van Aken location, mostly Rock the Bells um, and the um, band, the band camp class. Um, so those, excuse me, those um, classes from Van Aken are live stream live, like at the same time. And then there's also on demand library. So you could do a digital subscription and, and just book like an online class. Like and then the link goes out every day around like 11 or 11 a.m. or 12. And then it's a 24 hour link and you can choose from the entire library of classes. So like at Groove Ride right now, I'm teaching Rise and Grind, which is our more intense boot camp class. And so there's a library of Rise and Grind classes on there. There's Beatbox, there's Bandcamp, there's some yoga, there's um, Rock the Bells, which is a weight-based class, a strength class, which is great. Um, and all those you can pick and, you know, so if you have your stuff at home, you can just, you know, pop it on and have us tell you what to do. That's pretty awesome. So yeah. what all classes do you teach in addition to the cycling? So I teach cycling, I teach boot camp, I teach boxing. Um, what else do I teach right now? Um, I teach hit style classes, like high intensity interval training. I teach strength based. I teach Pilates mat. Um, mostly I do that not I, I do specialty like um classes at the solo community center we do them um, kind of seasonally so that's like a I don't teach it regularly but I teach I do teach Pilates mat I have a yoga certification I have uh, back from a while ago I have a beach body insanity certification a couple of years ago I got a myofascial release certification which is if people don't know that's like foam rolling um and I'm really so great for muscle recovery. And I'm such a believer in that. Um, and then I'm currently also studying for my fitness nutrition specialist certif- certification. So that's pretty cool. Just a couple, <laughs> just a few, just a few group yeah. fitness. What, what draws you to the group fitness? Like, again, there's multiple different styles and classes and all this kind of stuff, but I kind of lump them into this idea of like group fitness, right? This, this right. kind of higher intensity, uh, group fitness class. What, what draws you to that? And, and what do you think it is about that? That makes it so beneficial? Okay. Well, so many things. Oh, I also forgot one. I have my personal training certification too. Oh, so you do uh, personal. I, yeah. Yeah. I have my personal training. Well, I don't do a ton of one-on-one training anymore. Okay. Um, but I did for a long time I, and I have my certification. Um, I actually, which is so interesting because a lot of people will be like, oh, I have a personal trainer and they, they like doing the one-on-one. I love having my certification. I love having the knowledge of doing that additional certification. I prefer group fitness. I would pick that. And that's why I've kind of phased out of the, of the personal training. Um, well that and Doe street, which we'll get to, but um, I, I like being there. I like doing it with them. I like being part of the class. I like, I like being with a group. I like the, the camaraderie and the feeling of having a whole bunch of people there together. I love programming classes too. Like I really enjoy like sitting down and figuring, okay, what's my spinning playlist and like, what are we going to do on those? And, you know, for each part of the class or like, for a rise and grind at Groove Ride, like, you know, it's a pretty intense class and it, I can make it pretty, I can make it really, really difficult. So like, okay, how can I make it hard enough for these people who've been coming to this class for six years, you know? Um, 
boxing so fun. I got into boxing about five, six years ago um, with another company I had worked with at the time and taught for a while. And it's just one thing I learned about boxing and I teach um, beatbox at Groove Ride and I teach boxing boot camp at the JCC. And it's such a great full body workout. Like it's hard to find another workout that is cardio strength and core all wrapped up into one workout and boxing is that. Um, and, but I also think it's so important to cross train. Like, so while I teach all these classes and a lot of the classes I do as a group fitness instructor with class, um, so there's some, sometimes you coach them more than actually do the class. Um, but also I found that it's so important to like cross train, like, like all people come out to me and they'll be like, oh, I didn't come to boxing boot camp last week at the JCC because I was really sore. So I went to yoga instead. I'm so sorry I didn't come. They'll like say that to me. And I'm like, sorry, what are you sorry about? Like, that's fantastic. If you're sore, you shouldn't come. You should have gone to yoga or you should have like gone and gotten, you know, you know, some good stretching done or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm like, I always say to people like do a little bit of everything and that's, what's going to make your body strong and you're going to age well and have more functionality for all your movements, which is so important. So, you know, a little bit of everything and, and, and what you're comfortable with, but it's just overall, like group fitness gives you a chance to kind of try everything out, see what you like, what you excel at, what you're comfortable in. And then kind of can take it from there. Yeah. I, lo I love the options, right? Like, um, we work with a lot of CrossFitters and like, if you, you know, if your CrossFit is as varied as CrossFit is like, there's things that are missing, right? There's components of, of, uh, endurance or flexibility or whatever that's missing and, and pick whatever, you know, whatever fitness realm you're talking about. Um, so the idea of like, you're saying being able to switch if you, unless you're trying to be a specialist, right. You want to be right you want to be well-rounded. Um, and so once you get past training for a specific sport, like how do you, how, how do you pick which class you go to? Um, is that, is a challenge? I think what, what do you, it is a challenge. People? people have a hard time with that. And people think like they should be doing, you know, lifting, like, I don't know, like five days a week, or they should be doing cardio six days a week. And you don't have to like, you know, if you program it right, let's say the average person maybe works out like four days a week, or, you know, like a good solid, like workout schedules, four days a week, you know, somebody who's working out four to five days a week, they should do maybe like two high intensity days and three, two to three of those days should have strength work in them. And then, you know, maybe there's a recovery day in there too, which is something that's low, lower intensity for, for you. For me, a low intensity workout is the elliptical. I don't get super sweaty on it, but I could do it and I could still feel like I'm getting some light cardio in, but it's a little bit of more, more something I would use if I'm sore or worn out or whatever. So like you could pick a day like that and listen to your body, like listen to how you feel and don't push yourself. Like if you've done two high intensity cardio and strength combo, like hit workouts back to back days, don't do a third day of it. It's not going to, it's not going to benefit you. It's going to hurt you more than anything else. So I, you know, it's good to remind people that like a balance is great. Like personally, I started doing Pilates 15 years ago. I go every week. My friend teaches Pilates reformer, which is on the machine. Mm -hmm. I take her class every single week. I mean, unless like I'm out of town or whatever, she's out of town or sick or whatever, but I have taken that class. And I will tell you that I think I fully credit increased and strong core strength to taking that class regularly. That is something that I maybe don't love doing on my own, but I take a one hour Pilates class every week and it makes a difference. I make myself go to yoga every week because I know <laughs> that it's good and it balances and counteracts all the high intensity stuff I do. So it's important to like, it is so important to like listen to your body. And if you're new to a fitness program, talk to one of your extra fitness instructors at, at where you're going or you, talk to somebody who works in fitness and, and help them have them help you kind of plan out, you know, some people need it written down. They need, you know, 
Monday is strength and cardio, Tuesday, light strength only, Wednesday, hit, you know, Thursday, yoga recovery, you know, some people need it written down and that's fine. Like I'll help you, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, what you said of listen to your body is, is so important. And I think there's, especially for the new person, um, when are you being a baby versus when are you listening to your body? Right. Like, when are you skipping that class? Because you just don't want to go versus right. like, you don't need it. Uh, and I, and I think that's, that's a challenge, especially if it's a, you know, if you've been doing it for 15 years, you kind of know, right. And it's not about right. getting up and going to the class, but right. if, if you're new, I think it's harder. And, and maybe that's where the, the person that needs a program comes in, uh, yeah. or, or some of these other things. Well, and if it's new, it's also harder. And there's always the the fear, like if somebody's new and they're really committed to a fitness program and they feel worn out and maybe they skip a day, they also sometimes have that fear. I don't want to stop. I don't want to like lose, um, you know, kind of traction on what I'm doing. I don't want to lose traction. So they're worried they're going to maybe fall back and in their old ways, maybe they weren't going to classes, but it's important to remember once, you know, it's a lifestyle change. It's a choice you make, like just cause you miss a day or your body doesn't feel like going as hard one day doesn't mean that you're not making progress and that you shouldn't stick to it. You know? Yeah. So like, you see people in the gym and they're like, Oh, you know, uh, you know, I'm overweight or I'm not eating right. And I say to them, you're here you're doing it. You're making a change. So don't talk about those things. Let's talk about what you need to do to keep going in the direction that you want to go. Yeah. It's so much about positivity too. I think it would be interesting like, to separate the discipline mental side of that feeling of not going versus like the actual physical physiology of, of exercise. Right. right? Like, the understanding that exercise is a stress, right? You're adding stress to your body. And if you don't have the recovery piece, if you don't get the sleep and the nutrition and all that kind of stuff, it, it's not going to work, right? It's just going to break and your it down. services. <laughs> yeah. As much as right. We do physical therapy. Right. But yeah, I still feel like we're the, you know, we're the tip of the pyramid, right? I, I, you can come see me all you want, but if your sleep's not dialed in, it's right. not going to work either. Cause we're going to, whether it's manual therapy or it's exercise or it's whatever, it's still, we're applying a stress that I want your body to respond to, right? I'm going to stimulate a certain area to get blood flow and get an inflammatory response and promote healing in that area. But if your immune system is wrecked because you're not getting enough sleep and there's no time right. for that to happen, it's not going to work either. So I think there's conversation has to start with sleep. Then probably, I think honestly, probably nutrition, then dial in the, I don't know, the nutrition exercise thing kind of, they, to me, they're so tangled, but, um, probably nutrition, then exercise. And then at the very tip of the iceberg is, is us doing our rehab, physical therapy kind of stuff, unless you're broken, broken, and you can't go to right. the class. Now, if you're so broke, you can't do anything, then yeah, we're, we're your shop. <laughs> then they, <laughs> yeah. But from a maintenance standpoint, I think we're the tip, we're the tip of the, the top 10% of, of importance. Um, until you, yeah, you jack your backup so bad that you can't get on the bike, different conversation. Right. Or get out of bed. Then you're like, you are like number yeah. one important. Yeah. Right. No, I gotta, I gotta be here. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Um, yeah. So we, with that all in mind, how do you go from, you know, fitness group instructor, superstar to, to cookie dough? Like, how does that happen? And how are they, how, how does that connect? So when I started the company, like my parents were like, what, like, what, like, this doesn't even make any sense. And I was like, well, but okay. So I love to bake. I love dessert, but not all desserts. Like I'm very specific in my dessert. I love chocolate. I love cookies. I love chocolate chip cookies, which is kind of how the business started. So, um, I also love to travel. So my husband and I have been traveling and, you know, a few years ago when that edible cookie dough kind of dessert trend was starting and everywhere going, we were seeing it. And I was like, oh, and I was making it at home and I'd make it for family functions or friends or whatever. And I was like, cause I, I enjoy baking, not cooking as much, but I do love baking. Um, and I was like, we were, we were, at, we were in San Francisco and there was a edible cookie dough shop. And I was like, oh my God, like the line was down Fisherman's Wharf, like on the pier. And I was like, this is crazy. I'm like, how can we do something like this in Cleveland? I'm like, 
Yeah, honestly, like people ask how I started the company. I made a decision and like a month later I was up and running. I don't even know what I did. <laughs> like, I was like, I don't know. I was in California for a week on vacation, got going, got in court. My husband works in, uh, as another business. So he had some contacts that was help us get incorporated and, um, and get going. And I was like, okay, how can we do this in Cleveland? Because there's not like a location that's like a ton of foot traffic and like super touristy, like that's going to have enough for a shop. So I was like, oh, we could do like event based. So I got home. We ordered like a cookie dough, like a refrigerated cart for events. And I legitimately got off the plane and I wasn't, didn't have like my baking stuff. So I got off the plane and went right to Giant Eagle and got all the ingredients I needed. Cause I was like, my recipes are okay. But like, if we're like going to sell this, like they've got to be better. So I spent like, I don't know, three days straight trying recipes, throwing things in the garbage, tinkering around. I refused to start the business without having a gluten-free option um, because my friend has celiacs and also I work in fitness. So I wanted gluten-free for people if they're going to eat dessert. <laughs> um, the vegan took a little longer. It took me another about, a, I launched without a vegan flavor, but about a month or two in, I was able to come up with a good functional vegan chocolate chunk flavor. So basically it all came from my love of dessert, chocolate chip cookies, and having balance in your life. I eat oatmeal and egg whites for breakfast every day. I eat a turkey wrap and fruit for lunch every day. Uh, almost every day. Maybe it's a tuna wrap some days. I eat a protein, a vegetable, and brown rice or a potato for dinner. I have a protein shake. I have turkey jerky. I have, those are my snacks, you know, some vegetables or some fruit, things like that. What was the one thing? I mean, you can't, you can eat like that and it's going to make, you are going to get, you know, super ripped, but it's not life. Like I want a cookie sometimes. I want to be able to like make a cookie cake and sing happy birthday to my kids and eat part of it and not be like, I'm not eating that. It's sugar. So it's all about balance. Like people ask me all the time, like, do you even eat the stuff you make and sell? The answer is yes. 100%. Yes, I do. I try and eat clean 90% of the time, but then there's a 10% of the time that, you know, it's life. You have life functions. You want to be part of family occasions and, you know, you've got to do things and eat things you enjoy and that bring you happiness because you get happiness from that kind of stuff too. So the truth is it's all in moderation, you know, like, you know, find a decent serving size and, and eat, eat it <laughs> now, you know, I, I, that's, that's really true. If, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, somebody says they go to fast food every day. I'd say, no, it's a really, really bad idea. I wouldn't do that. Somebody says I want to have dessert twice a week. I'd say that's a really, really good idea. You should do that. Yeah. There's a whole emotional component to food, right? And you can dive mm -hmm. into the brain chemistry side, but it's oh, a okay. part of celebrations, right? Like yes. birthdays, yes. you have food, uh, holidays, you yes. have food, right? Like it's, it's a part of culture. Um, so it I, is. And I think things have shifted and I love seeing them. And that's part of the reason that I'm getting my fitness nutrition certification is you see more and more dietitian, registered dietitians and nutritionists and people in the industry of fitness, like that it's, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Like, you know, if you're a bodybuilder and you're cutting for an event, that might be all or nothing, right? At that time. But in life, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You could be in really good, good physical shape. You could feel really, really great about yourself, but you can also do things and eat things and be part of things that like you enjoy what you don't have to eliminate. That doesn't have to be a full elimination. Now, if you have food allergies or insensitive or sensitivities, I mean, that's different, but there's a place for things that may bring you happiness, I think. And cookie dough, and we started, so, and then about a year ago, we, so it was all edible cookie dough the first couple of years. And then with COVID, we lost a lot of our events and our event-based stuff because nobody was having parties and, you know, weddings. And um, so we started Brookies, which are, so the cookie dough is like unbaked and edible. And we started uh, Brookies because our dough was also bakeable. When I created the recipes, I wanted it all to be bakeable too. So if you wanted to make a cookie, you could. 
So um, I made sure that it was bakeable. And so we made a couple little changes and we make brookies now too, which are totally baked, completely indulgent and almost like three quarters of a pound each. <laughs> <laughs> and like they're huge and they have either a brownie or blondie base and cookie and candy mixed in and then one of our flavors of cookie dough baked on top so With there more is more cookie and candies on top <laughs> there is no health component to this cookie dough company correct like no. it's it's correct you're all in all in people have asked me that too they're like will you make like a healthy or yeah. protein cookie dough and my answer as of now remains no, because the point of the company is that it is a treat and that it is dessert. I'm not going to say never, but I'd have to say that if I'm going to do one, it's going to be really good because there are companies that make protein cookie doughs and I've ordered almost all of them. And not, not I so mean, good. they taste like what you make it out of. They taste like chickpeas. Like if I'm going to eat chickpeas, I'm going to have hummus like and crackers uh, or a hummus on a rice cake. If I want cookie dough, I want cookie dough. You know? <laughs> I, yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, right. I, I When I first saw, you know, like, you know, you're looking at your accounts. I was like looking for the keto zero calorie cookie dough. That was what no. I, that's what I was anticipating I was going to find. Yeah, no, 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 it's, <laughs> no, it's straight in. So do you guys no. ship, do you guys ship the cookie dough or is it literally just event, event based? No, so we, we we sell it locally in some shops here in Cleveland. Okay. Um, and then um, we also ship it. It's totally shippable. The cookie dough we have to ship refrigerated, so it's a little tricky, but we do ship it. The brookies, since they're fully baked, um, those don't need to be refrigerated, so we're shipping those. And um, looking, actually, I'm really, that's kind of my new year focus for the company is focusing on how we can do a little more shipping of those because they're really great for like, uh, we do two packs and four packs for those. I mean, great. We had a bunch of orders of the, in December for college care packages for kids taking finals. Um, it's really fun birthday gifts. Uh, if you need a hostess gift or something like that, you know, you're going somewhere for dinner and they want to bring dessert, you take a box of four and they're so like a box of four is basically a nine by nine brownie pan. Okay. Um, so like, right. So one is a quarter of a pan. So, but if you do like a box of four, or one of each of our four flavors, and then you can cut them into bite size. Like they are made for sharing. <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the portion control side of the, the equation. That is true. Exactly. That's a portion control side. The only glitch in that is when you take one and you put it on the kitchen counter and you cut a little piece off, but then you leave it on the counter for everyone else in the family. And then you keep coming back and cutting a little more and a little more and a little more. And then all of a sudden you ate the whole thing. It yeah. happens. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, have, I I'm so guilty, like sugary stuff. Like once I start sugar, it's bad news. Like it's, Same. it's bad news. Um, yeah. I, my wife is the same way. We like you buy whatever serving you want to eat and then you're yeah. just okay with that. Cause if you buy more than that serving, then you're, you know, you're constantly just staring at it. That's totally me. That's I don't like know I how... said, I get my egg whites and my oatmeal, but like you put something like a baked good in front of me with chocolate, forget about it. <laughs> do you have <laughs> on, on the health side, like how do you, um, how do you separate that? Like, it's easy to say everything in moderation, but like, how do you do that personally? Right. You're obviously you're living the fitness world. You're, you're kind of maintaining this healthy lifestyle. Meanwhile, you got this, you know, this whole company that's on the indulgent dessert side. Like, what advice do you give your, your fitness consumers to, to make that happen? Cause it's a chat. I mean, it's a challenge. A huge challenge. So basically I created a company of my favorite desserts. Like if it, <laughs> cheesecake or like, you know, something like that, a pastry, like with fruit, I'd be like, forget about it. So I basically created something to torture myself all the time. Cause it's always in my face. <laughs> right. So like I go to the bakery, I go to the kitchen. I have a couple bakers that help me, but like I'm there all the time and I'm around it all the time. So it takes a lot of willpower and it takes a lot of control. And I would tell anybody like, don't, <laughs> don't tempt yourself. Like you said, like you, you buy what you need or buy what you're going to have for that. Don't always buy, you know, more than something, you know, if, if, if you love brownies 
and you go to Heinen's and you get like the picnic brownie, like, you know, container, you know, and you want to get that, buy one of them and then buy it like once a month. Don't buy it every week when you go do your grocery shopping, you know? If you know your family's having a celebration and you get some cupcakes or a cake, do you need the biggest size cake so there's leftovers for a week? Or do you need a smaller cake so that it's gone at the end of the night? You know, so something I do with my treats is I don't always bring them home. Like if I'm at the bakery and I'm working, I'm usually busy, so I'm distracted and I don't really want to eat it. Um, if I bring it home and it's on the kitchen counter, it's right in the refrigerator. Every time I open up, I'm going to be like, hmm, maybe I'll have a little bite. And right when I have a bite, like, I'm like you, like once I start, forget about it. Mm -hmm. Like all bets are off. I'll just keep going. So I'll do that. Like, I don't always bring it home. Um, I, sometimes I'll bring home cookie dough for my kids if they have friends over. And one thing I do, we have a refrigerator in our garage. So it's not in our refrigerator. So we don't see it and eat it all the time. I'll put it in the garage refrigerator. So if they have friends over, I'll go get it. I'll bring it in. You know, they kind of, you know, it's a treat for their friends or whatever, but I don't have it there in our fridge for us to see all the time. So you can kind of play tricks with your own mind sometimes. You know, if you're buying candy for Halloween, put it in the, you know, the bag, the grocery bag, tie it off, put it in your basement storage until Halloween. And then on Halloween, you bring it out. And of course we all, you know, eat Halloween candy on Halloween because it's Halloween. So right. just, you know, put it away, put it aside, put it in the back of the pantry, um, buy a smaller portion size. It's Portions are a huge thing here in the United States. I mean, you know, everything's just over, hugely oversized portion size, you know, with, especially with fast food. And I mean, there, there, it's gotten a little bit better. There are smaller and healthier options, but, you know, just, just be conscious and be cognizant of what you're deciding to, to eat. You know, people ask like for Doe Street, do we have nutrition facts in, in, in macros? And if anyone doesn't know what macro, that's your carbohydrates, protein, and your fats. We do have that for the cookie, cookie dough. We don't have it for the brookies. So, you know, be smart. Stop when you feel full, right? Like when you're, when your body is, your stomach's like feeling stuffed and you, it's not enjoyable to eat it anymore. That's your mind and your body telling you, okay, you're good right now. Have some water. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to envision how somebody fits in a quarter, quarter sheet cookie dough, uh, cookie into their macros. <laughs> oh, it's hard. Yeah. Maybe don't track that day. Yeah. <laughs> don't track your macros that day. Yeah. But I, I know, yeah, I'm the the food side of thing has always been a challenge for me. And um, at least in my current mindset, it's like, look, if it's a celebration, just celebrate, enjoy it. But when yes. you're not celebrating, like you, you just can't eat that stuff all the time. It's bad news. Right. It's, it's bad, bad news and sugars. I mean, I know it sounds so contradictory for having a dessert company, but sugar is in, inflammatory. Like it's going to affect your body. Your stomach's probably not going to feel as good. You're going to be a little bit more sluggish. You may not sleep as great. So there are like of excess sugar, like, I mean, there are side effects, so, you know, of daily life. So like, right. Like, but if you're only eating it in moderation a couple of times a week, then you're not going to, it's not going to be, it's not going to build up in your system. And you're not going to feel like that, the constant, you know, kind of effects of it. So yeah. And nutrition is so much of it. Like, you know, you know, people say they're like, Oh, well, I'm working out six days a week or seven days a week. And I'm not seeing any changes. I'm like, well, what are you eating? Well, I have egg McMuffin for breakfast. Um, I usually skip lunch and then dinner or whatever I've laid around. Okay. That's like, eh, eh, eh. no, no, no. Like fast food. No. Um, skipping meals. No. And a non-planned meal. No. Like, so it takes a lot of work. Like that's the other thing I tell people to like, it's a lot of work. Like you're constantly, if you are planning and you're eating healthy, once if, it, if it's a transition and something new for you, 
it's going to be a lot of work because you have to change your mindset and you have to shift your mindset and you have to think about how is this going to fit into my fitness? Like, you know, cause it's all, it's all timing too. So, you know, you want to eat breakfast, always eat breakfast, like eat a healthy breakfast. Right. And then, okay, well, if I'm going to go work out, I can't eat that breakfast right before because then I'm going to be too full and I might not have the most like effective workout because I'm so full. So eat your breakfast an hour before, right? So then you're eating your breakfast an hour before you go to your group fitness class and then you digest, you work out. I mean, you work out and then you're hungry, right? So, okay, what should you eat after your fitness class? How soon after the class? And then how soon again after that? So it's, it's so much science to it also, but the most important thing is eating balanced meals that have all those macros that have your fat, your carb, your protein. Oh, the other one that drives me crazy is the no carb diets. They drive me nuts, especially for fitness people. If you're working out, you need carbohydrates. I've, so I played with keto, I don't know, a few months ago. Um, high intensity workouts suck. Like you just can't, but you could do like slow weightlifting running. It's not too bad. Yeah. Um, my current, my current like fascination is all this stuff on insulin. Um, yeah. In, in like how blood sugar and insulin and that, that interaction and uh, the, the meal timing stuff is, is really interesting. Um, like exercise, and this is newer, this is just kind of my personal journey, right? But yeah. this, this idea that exercise increases a non-insulin dependent glucose uh, uptake. So insulin usually is the, the thing that's released to allow you to bring glucose into the cell. And so every time you eat, you're releasing insulin so you can absorb blood sugar. And in our country, people are releasing insulin constantly because we eat too frequently. And like you're saying, there's super hyper palatable foods and fast food and all this kind of stuff, right? So exercise allows you to kind of avoid, like not need the insulin uptake, which is so interesting to me because if Mm -hmm. insulin is driving some of these health issues, and I shouldn't say like we need insulin, but this constant influx of insulin gives you that opportunity, right? So I know there's people out there talking about like, well, if you know you're going to have a dessert, well, then you throw in, you know, 45 minutes of slow intensity cardio. So the muscles are receptive to bringing in that sugar and you don't store it as fat. And I don't know if that's too far. Like, like, look, if you want to have a dessert, like, is it okay to just have the dessert or do you need to plan it to the point where you're like, well, look, I got this event later. I know I'm going to eat like crap. So I'm going to do an hour and a half of cardio before I show up. You know, is that, what point do we just go, all right, this is getting crazy versus that's, this is what I need to do for health. Point. You know, it's yeah, yeah, no, but people, people do it all the time. People think, okay, well, I'm going to, I know I'm going to a party and I'm going to eat bad. So I'm going to work out extra hard today and extra hard the next day. And, but then sometimes that registers in the mind, like is a guilt thing. Like you're guilty because you're having fun or eating or drinking something that, you know, maybe isn't the most healthy option, but you don't want to feel guilty about enjoying yourself, right? Because again, life is all about balance and doing things that bring happiness and joy and, you know, while keeping ourselves healthy and running, our bodies running efficiently. So listen, in my early days, I'd be like, oh gosh, I ate so bad yesterday. I'm going to work out extra hard. But as I've learned more, I realize it's not the best mindset, you know, because you're not, you're not, you're not punishing yourself or you're not, you know, holding yourself like responsible for, for doing something that is enjoyable or that you're looking forward to. So I would say, you know, your normal workout, do whatever you would normally do. And then if you know, you're going out that night, you, you know, you're going out, you know, as long as somebody's not having a rager, drinking a ton of alcohol, eating pure sugar and horrible meals, you know, if, if you do it once in a while, it's not gonna, it's not gonna affect you negatively in the long term. So yeah, I mean, a lot of it is so much mindset and, you know, and, and sticking on a nutrition plan and sticking on a fitness plan is so much mindset too. It's so easy. It's so easy to, you know, get frustrated or get upset with yourself when you're trying to do something and trying to see something through. But like, just because you have one little setback, which maybe is missing a workout or two, or maybe it's drinking a bottle of wine and having a gallon of ice cream, whatever it is, 
just because it happens doesn't mean you're off the rails. It just means take a deep breath, reset, start fresh the next day. You just get back on your plan. Don't stop what you're doing just because you maybe had, you know, a minor, minor setback. Yeah, as you were saying that, and, and you said long term, but the first thing that came to my mind is like that short term, short term mentality versus long term mentality of, look, I'm on this diet, and I'm on this exercise plan, and I'm going to get going with it. And then as soon as you break, you're like, Oh, I screwed up again, right? And, and then you're oh, off. Yeah. Versus oh, yeah. if, if you're have that long term mindset of, look, the reality is, if you have one bad night, it's not the end of the world, right? As long as you get right. back on the one bad night doesn't turn into, you know, a month of, of unless you let it right yeah, right but that's what i mean you somehow you have to dial it in again and, and i think that's whether it's physiology or mindset I, i'm i'm not sure but i think that's challenging for a lot of people myself included it's right so, challenging. so easy to get way off the wagon yeah it's very challenging i think that's probably people that i talk to who you know are working on a fitness program or diet or nutrition program or combination of the two that might be the hardest like people i hear people say all the time like and listen i'm guilty you know of doing this like you know you have i have let's say i'm making sample test batches and i'm sampling stuff and it's one of those days like i need to sample i know i'm gonna eat it and i'm like oh i get home you know from the bakery and i'm like oh i already had like probably two or three cookies worth. I might as, and you have the sugar, you know, the sugar's in your mouth. You want more of it. I'm like, oh, something else tonight too. And then I eat like another pound of desserts when I get home. Cause I'm like, oh, I already messed up my day. I don't think that way anymore, but I used to. You say, oh, you already messed up my day. I might as well eat whatever, but, or do whatever. Or just like, if I'm not going to work out, I didn't make it to work out today. So I'm just going to eat a pint of ice cream and watch a movie. Like, no, like, it's so easy. And that's one of the most common things that people say, like, once you kind of feel like you lost it a day or whatever it is, you know, like, oh, forget it. It's all screwed up anyway, but it's not. And that is such a shift in people's brain. And it's so hard for people to make that shift. And it takes time because you have to shift and be like, it's, it, it was, it's just a blip it's fine. Keep moving. You know, how did you get there? Like, how did you switch that mindset? Oh gosh. I mean, it was a process. It's such a process. It's, it, it's not something that happened overnight. It was a process of probably over, I would say at least a solid year, like talking to yourself, you, you it's okay. Like in my head, I'd be like, uh, well, I'm like, I like, I'd be like, oh, for me, it was really not the workout. I'm pretty regimented in my workout. So for me, it was more like the nutrition and like the dessert, right? So I'd be like, oh, I already messed up my day. I'll eat whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, but then I would be like, as a, like, like later that day, I'd be like, I don't feel good. Like, I don't feel good. And I'd be like, okay, I have to remember how I feel. I feel over full. I have a little bit of some food sensitivities, no, and nothing major, but like, I have a little insensitivities. I'm like, I'm like, I feel like my head hurts. My face feels puffy. Like my stomach's gurgling. I have like no energy. Um, and I'd wake up the next morning and I wake up and I'm like, Oh, I don't feel good. Like still like, so I started actually putting in the notepad on my phone. Like, this is how I feel today. I let myself figure I ruined the day. I ate whatever I wanted. I didn't list what I ate. I just said like whatever dessert I wanted. And I feel like garbage. I feel miserable. I feel like I have no energy to work out. My face is puffy and my head hurts. And then I just kept doing that. And I would go back. Like if I had another day like that, I'd go back and I'd look at what I wrote. I'm like, I don't feel good. Like stop doing this to yourself. Don't feel good. You know? So it was a process of reminding myself and like checking in with myself and saying, Okay, I'm doing this like to myself because I feel like I love dessert so much. I'm going to get them all packed into one day, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like I'm just getting everything now. But it wasn't, it was physio physiologically, it wasn't making me feel good. So, but it took time of reminding myself and like thinking about it. And it happened. Like I, it, it wasn't overnight. Like I would do it again a month later and I'd be like, oh crap, I did it again, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and then another thing is a lot of times people say like, I'm going to have a cheat meal or I'm going to have a full cheat day and eat whatever I want. 
but those mess up your body and your metabolism because like you, it throws everything off. Right. So then it takes a couple of days for your body to kind of get back in check. So those aren't really like, if you talk to a registered dietitian, all of them that I'm friends with would say they can't stand cheat meals or cheat days. You know, if it's a Saturday night and you and your wife are going out to dinner and, you know, you want to order like a fun appetizer, you wouldn't normally eat or something you want to make at home, order the appetizer. It doesn't have to be a cheat meal or, you know, and then you still want to maybe get your like salmon or whatever for dinner with a grilled vegetable you know, it's, you balance it out. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be the biggest thing. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. It does not have to be all or nothing. And the other thing is a lot of times I hear people say like, well, I'm going to just eat bad on the weekends, but healthy Monday through Friday. It doesn't really have to be that way. Like yesterday was MLK day. My kids were home. We were off school. We were baking. It was a Monday. Guess what? I had dessert. <laughs> like, okay. Like it wasn't Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Like it wasn't a weekend, but I had a dessert on a Monday. So like, I probably won't eat a lot of real desserts, you know, until for a few more days, but like, it was fun. I enjoyed it. And like, like it didn't, you know, it doesn't mess up your day or your week just because you have something or like, you know, you have an occasion on a Monday and you go out to dinner. So it's, it's so much, so much, um, you know, kind of like coaching yourself in your, in your own mind is I was, it was really the key and it's very difficult. It's not easy. Yeah. I like that strategy idea of kind of writing that down for kind of reinforcement of, um, how you feel. I, um, I've been wearing a whoop band, like it tracks your oh, yeah. sleep and your, I haven't you know, tried right? those yet. Do you like it? Uh, so some coaching friends talked me into it and the okay. old version of it. I didn't love only cause like me and the battery never got along. It felt like it was like, Oh, okay. you have 20% <laughs> left. And it was dead the next day. And I just got frustrated. I was like, this is like, whatever, but this new one, the battery is actually like decent and whatever. And, uh, what I liked about it is it kind of gives you that realistic check-in because it tracks your heart rate and your sleep. So you'd be like, Oh, I've been working out like crazy. And then you can literally go back and look at your 30 day thing and be like, yeah, really, I didn't work out that much, right? You can kind of see how many days a week <laughs> you got cool. you got your heart rate elevated. Um, but I've been toying with um, some intermittent fasting stuff, right? I'm just kind of self experimenting. I'm into this whole insulin thing right now. But, um, you know, that idea of a cheat meal or whatever. And so like, yeah. you know, I've been pretty, pretty careful for a while. And I forget what we were doing, but literally had my um, I love dates, mendigual dates. Yeah. Love them best thing ever. So my mom had got us some for Christmas, literally as a bag of dates was in a stocking. Oh, so fun. <laughs> right? Simple. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I've been pretty focused for a while. I'm going to eat these. We were watching a movie. Um, but it was late. It was like nine o'clock at night or something like that. So I had those. And then my daughter has these chicken nuggets. So I had a few chicken nuggets, right? Cause screw it. I'm already cheating. So I had some yeah. chicken nuggets and, um, that night, I didn't sleep great. And the whoop band, literally my, it gives you like a recovery score. It was in the red. Yeah. Like it was as low as if it was a night of drinking. It was insane. Wow. I, could, I couldn't believe it. it. And my respiratory rate had increased. And so it actually told me that I was sick. It was like, I got this alert, wow. like you may be getting sick, be careful. And maybe I was getting sick. I don't know, but, uh, it was, I was crazy. I was like, Oh, that's wow. Wait, how many dates did you eat? I don't know. It was like a bag. So like 30, like no, those could be no, hard no. on your It was oh, probably, okay. I don't know. It was the, the bigger, the mendigal ones. I don't know. Probably okay. 12, 15. I don't know. Oh, that's not it. I was like I was thinking a huge bag of dates. I'm like, his stomach was probably a wreck, <laughs> mm. but you know, you can use dates and a lot of like healthy options too. You can oh, grind so them up and put them in like energy ball and make energy bites with them and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. 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 They're so good. But I, I guess what I couldn't believe is like how crazy it was. I was wearing a glucometer for a while where it would like, actually you could measure your blood glucose. And so I knew it was going to yeah. spike it. Uh, obviously it's just pure sugar, but I, I did not expect the physiologic, like my, my yeah. resting heart rate to That's be amazing. different. My respiration rate to be different. Um, and it took the next day, you know, whoop gives you these recovery numbers or whatever. So the next day was probably like, I don't know, 50% better. And then, um, by the third day I was kind of back on 
on track, um, which was interesting to me. It's so interesting. And right, it shows it takes time for your body to recover from something like that. Right, from right. A that's, <laughs> that's what made when you said that, that's what made me think of it. Like, yeah, it did take two days before my kind of heart rate variability was was back on the on the whoop band. And and again, I don't know, it was a one time occurrence, but it was wild that it was literally the yeah. night that I had those dates. It was like so cool. And then my wife was like, You're kind of crummy. Like she's like, You're in a mood today or something. And and I like looked at, and that's what made me look at the band, like to look at the app. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Whoop is telling me that I feel like crap too. So there you go. Yeah. That's so yeah. interesting. I love the science and like the technology that we have now, like that, you know, is accessible to like analyze those kind of things, which is just so cool. I still have my trusty Fitbit, um, yeah. but it's, it's, I can tell it's, it's getting on. I mean, this is like my third or fourth one. So it's going to be a question for myself, what I get next for my uh, tracking device. I just didn't want a phone. I didn't want the phone attached to my wrist. Um, yeah. I'm already attached to that stupid thing. And I just didn't want it. As much I as it agree. never actually leaves my hand, I didn't want it connected to me. So that's Oh, no, I, I totally agree with you, Nick. Like I do. Like I, we got my brother for a big birthday. We all went in and got him an Apple watch. So I did all the research and I got it. And I was like, oh, man. I'm like, I don't know. Like I have the, my Fitbit could have phone calls or texts come in. I have it turned off. So yeah. like I can use it for fitness tracking and, you know, heart rate and stuff like that, but I don't even have that on. I'm like, so I don't know what, because I feel the same way. I'm like, I always have my, I don't need to see my text messages on my wrists, my wrists, like, you know, come in while I'm teaching a class or something like that. It's distracting. Or you're just talking to somebody, right? And that thing buzzes and you, you like, you're going to look at it because it buzzes your oh, hand, yeah. you know? And I just, I don't yeah, know. People, and that, right. And that's so annoying. Like when people are like, they look at in the, like, you're in the middle of like a sentence. I'm like, oh, I wasn't talking. That's fine. <laughs> uh, the first time it ever really got me, I was like, we do a lot of hands-on therapy in our, in our physical therapy sessions. And I was like stretching somebody's arm or doing range of motion or whatever, but I had a hold of their wrist. And their hands started buzzing and it like scared me. I like jumped. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, it's phone. <laughs> right. now it's now it's so normal. Like, like it happens all the time. I'm used to it now. Yeah, but I, remember right. the first, I specifically remember the first time one of those things buzzed while I was ranging somebody, moving somebody's arm or whatever. I was like, oh, this is crazy. But yeah, I, I with all your physical therapy and using your hands. Can you imagine how annoying that would be? Like if you're working on somebody and your wrist was and I start buzzing them. Buzzing. It'd be like yeah. having one of those hypervolts on them the whole time, right? Just buzz, buzz, yeah, buzz. yeah. <laughs> love, love those. Yeah. Love those. Yeah, yeah. We're actually like between cupping and the hypervolt, right? You can talk about like quick recovery for just like not trying to fix an injury, but just recovery. Ah, it's so awesome. Um, the the yeah. physiology of that's pretty cool, but different topic. Um, anyway, I want to be respectful of your time. This was a lot of fun. Um. I always try to wrap up with what do you think you're going to be doing next year? What do you think you're going to be interested in? The, like, where do you think you're going, whether it's with the company or your fitness or what's your, what's your new interest? What do you, what are you into next? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. Um, you, you know, one thing I've learned is that like, you just never know what's ahead. I've kind of taken different paths along the way. But I would say one thing on my bucket list, I don't know if I'll, I probably won't be in the next year, but um, I would like to eventually get a full 200 hour yoga certification. Um, but what in the next, in the more immediate next year, I would love to build the online sales of the Brookies to build that division. And I would also love in the fitness realm to finish my fitness nutrition certification and also do some like, coaching and working with people on how to kind of put it all together and how to get that mindset and um and kind of kind of help people find a plan and find a way and I really even things like I have an interest in working with people and like you you realize is the more you talk to people like they don't know how to pick things out at the grocery store like simple things like that like I'd love to I'd love to build, I guess, I guess, so. I guess I do have a plan for the next year. Those are my two things, build the online sales of the Brookie and then build a little clientele base with uh, the nutrition, helping people and a day-to-day, -day, not a dietary plan, nothing like that, but a day-to-day -day how to make decisions in their daily life 
to, you know, have a healthy kitchen. There you That's go. awesome. Yeah. I'm going to reference people back to your, I love your mindset on, um, kind of that mindset shift of not the all in or all out kind of mo like method of eat, like, uh, mentality of eating and, and kind of how you got through that process for yourself. That, that was, I, I appreciate you sharing that. I'm definitely going to reference, I'm going to make a clip of that in this podcast and I'm going to reference to it. Oh, for sure. And honestly, like, hopefully to tell people that like it happened, like I work in fitness, I have a knowledge of this stuff, but it still was a process for me. Like it's not easy for anybody, even if you know what you should be doing. So hopefully that'll help people understand, like, it's okay. Like for it to be hard, like, you know, and you know, I'm on your side, like people are, people are on your team. They want to help you get there. Like, and you know, and the fitness component too. Like, I mean, I'll always love teaching group fitness. I can't imagine ever not um, doing that and having that as part of my, like my life. So, you know, just for people to, I just want people to feel like, you know, the positivity and that they can do it. And if they want to make a change and they really have like the heart to do it, any, you can do, you can do it. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Um, I think it's a great way to wrap up where, uh, where can people find out more about you? Uh, well, all my social media, my, um, Instagram is at Katie Pollock 22. So it's K A T I E P O L L O C K 22. That's my Instagram, um, Facebook. I'm Katie Pollock Sims. That's S I M M S. Um, cookie dough. If you want some cookie dough or brookies, that's dough street on Instagram and Facebook. Um, Facebook's Doe Street Cookie Dough. Um, I wasn't really on Twitter until actually yesterday, but I'm there now. And I'm Katie Pollock DS. That's for the DS is for Doe Street. Street on Twitter. Yeah. And uh, Doe Street on Twitter, at Doe Street on Twitter too. That's awesome. I'm going to be ordering some gluten-free cookie dough. Gonna... All right. That's peanut butter cup. No peanut allergies, right? No peanut allergies, but gluten. All right, perfect. Gluten, not so great, but okay. I, I'm excited to try it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna order some uh, here shortly. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Thank can you. We, can you find uh, with that in mind? Can you find it anywhere locally? Like you mentioned, you're in some boutiques. Where's it at? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, locally, Goldie's Donuts in Lynnhurst. We sell it there. The brookies and the cookie dough. Um, and we actually that's our home bakery. We share a kitchen with them, so we work okay. out of Goldie's Donuts. Um, Heritage Coffee in Solon. We sell the cookie dough and brookies um goldie's always has all the flavors heritage usually has everything but can sometimes be more sorted um notre dame college falcon cafe in south euclid um anybody could walk in there but they sell it there too adrenaline monkey if you take your daughter um we have two flavors of cookie dough there in the concession stand um and is that everywhere oh milk and honey cafe in downtown and that is, um, they sell the Brookies there. And we have a new location in February, but I can't tell you yet, but it's coming soon. A very exciting uh, partnership that we're going to be trying out in February. So stay tuned for that on our social media in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> That's awesome. Congrats. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll have to talk soon. All right. Thanks, Nick, so much.